Good afternoon. I'm Lucas Panzeca from the 104.5 The Zone Studios. Adam Schefter broke the news today. Former Titans running back Derrick Henry will sign with the Baltimore Ravens. It's a two-year deal worth $16 million, up to $20 million, with $9 million guaranteed in 2024. Some of the latest NFL news, Marcus Spears of ESPN reporting that Ravens free agent linebacker Patrick Queen plans to sign a three-year $41 million contract with the Pittsburgh Steelers. As far as the moves the Titans have made, everything that we have seen came down on Monday, bringing in former Cowboys running back Tony Pollard, former Cowboys and Bengals corner Chidobe Awuzie, as well as former Chargers linebacker and first-round pick Kenneth Murray. The National Predators look to continue an 11-game point streak tonight at the Winnipeg Jets. Puck drop at 6.30. For all your foundation repair and waterproofing needs, visit USSTN.com. Breaking news at once on your home for the Titans and Vols. This is 104.5 The Zone. Blaine and Mickey, 104.5 Zone. What's up, everybody? Uh, it is Tuesday. The news of Derrick Henry moving Ooh. to the evil Baltimore Empire. That news is out. I think Schefter may have been the first guy to report it. Uh, not surprising, but uh, got messages from people who still said, hey, man, I knew this was coming, but wow, what a punch in the gut. <laughs> It, I've been you, trying to help everybody for a year now. It, you even said again yesterday, guys. <laughs> it's going to be hard. It is a business. It's a business. I get it, though, man. You know, we get attached to the, the great players, and you want them to play for your team the whole entire time. And, uh, yeah, but unfortunately, yeah, that's why I, I was pretty sure that that was going to be the sign and out of the, the speech after the game. and yeah. I'm, I'm sure everybody else thought it was. But uh, because if you're in his shoes, just put yourself in his shoes, you can still love him, and you're, you're a fan of him, and you want him to stay. But – he now to solidify his his legacy as a, an NFL running back. There's nothing left for him to accomplish besides getting a Super Bowl ring and going on a Super Bowl run. And at the end of his, let's say the end of his career, let's say it's just starting to dip down. Uh, he wants to be part of you know not a rebuild, but an actual. And I'm going to say rebuild because that's what the Titans are doing. Oh, yeah. nobody's saying that, but that that's what they're doing. They they should have started the process before th- this last season. Uh, and I get it. You're trying to hang on. Think you got one more sign out, or you got one more year. Uh, so you know, for his uh, you know career, the end. Let's say over the next, let's say he plays three more years, uh, he has to come away with uh, some type of performance in the playoff run and Super Bowl run uh, that uh, he can be remembered by, and that will kind of put him over the snide to me uh, for Hall of Fame. Now, whether he gets in first, second, third, and all that craziness, I, I have no idea, but. I think that that's it for him. He's got he's rushed for two thousand. He's on an elite list. He's rushed for thousands of yards. Uh, he's been the dude. Uh-huh. I think uh, now he's going to go to a playoff contending team, and he try to get a ring. And you say, well, what else is he going to try to accomplish over his time? How long does he want to play? Has anybody ever asked the king how long does he want to play? Like. Like how motivated it is because when you look at him, you go, hmm. He maybe he doesn't have the home run hit. Maybe he's right. he's more the guy to get, you know because he didn't have him. I I couldn't tell, but he didn't have him. So that's the. So if he becomes this guy that he is now, how long can he go like that? That's a pretty good. Like you get a really good back. Yeah. Like right now, I think he could stay right at this level for another two or three years, and that's still elite. Led the AFC in rushing. Yeah. This version of him with. Yeah. That offensive line, <laughs> yeah, like there is no way I, yeah. I would have made it out of some of the games. I would have, I would have just, <laughs> we would have had some serious conversations in that huddle. <laughs> Anybody <laughs> made it? Yeah, so he did it. So he's he's a special special player. I, I think he's one of uh, one, and uh, man, just uh, appreciate the the run that he had. Uh, and I, I want to see him to have a shot at a ring. That from a player to player, I want to see him to have that shot. Yeah. Uh, because he deserves, because you know he he may not uh, get it if he stayed with the Titans, uh, and that's the shot to get in the Hall of Fame, and so uh, and that that plays a part in it. Um, so we, we shall see. I, you know, and you guys know how much I, you know, that's the most hated team for me. Is it started with the Steelers and it changed to the the Ravens. So yeah, that's that's a tough pill. But hey, 
it is what it is. They're they're moving in a different direction. So hopefully it'll be good for both both Henry and the organization and the new coach mm-hmm. and moving forward. And maybe that's why they had uh, Pollard as their first target because they wanted to get the noise out the way and realize that we're moving forward without the king. Well, and you're right. If you if you're going to tell a fan base it's time to turn the page, yeah. signing Pollard is the first way to say, guys, this this, this is what it is now. Yeah. Well, I mean, the it. head coach was first. Yeah. That was the first domino. But yeah, this offense is, is going to change. It's going to be modernized the NFL. Style is going to be a little more open, but I, I'm excited though for the Pollard. I, I didn't ever think about Pollard Spears combo. Mm-hmm. Like what I've had said is, I want the guy to be the same guy, and you know that way you have no tips being a former defensive guy. Yep. They are definitely that. <laughs> that's that's yep. what they are. Yep. So uh, it's pretty cool that they getting one on a, a rookie deal and another one, you know, you know, for good solid pay, uh, but not the highest pay for a running back. So I think uh, it that that'll work out pretty well. Like you said yesterday, roll, roll with who has a hot hand. Somebody yeah. gets out um, there, gets cooking. Okay. Yeah, nothing changes in their offense whether who's in there. And I, I, I man, being a former defensive guy, that was always uh, the tail tape. I would go through my mind. Soon somebody would run off and run on. I go, uh oh, they're in this personnel. They like to do these things. And then when they line up, and some guys can't decipher information as fast, but this is one of my keys to my game, is that as uh, soon as they line up, I can I can break it down. Three plays are going to run immediately, whether it's a run or a pass. As I said before, they run the same play. Now, they may add 10 plays or so each game. Right. Uh, but they have to run what their players know and feel comfortable with, by the way, too, especially on offense. Uh, you know, defensively, you can come up with a whole bunch of crazy schemes and different stuff week to week, but your your players may mess up or blow a coverage on motion or something that you didn't go over. Right. Uh, that can always happen. So, yeah, man, this is a really unique time for for the Titans, and I'm interested to see who else they sign. Like, and not even just position, just the players that they scouted, that they wanted, they signed in free agency. I mean, man. So I I, I didn't know much about the, the center, and, man, I look him up, and, man, he may have been, you know, there was – Three really good centers out there mm-hmm. on the open market, and a lot of people feel like that he's the best in totality of them all. So, hey, that's a good start with Pollard, and see where we go from there. They don't have a kicker, <laughs> by the way. I mean, you know, I don't know. Bananas has been practicing back there. I've been seeing him stretch on the brakes, and he says he's got a strong leg. He said, "Don't let the, you know, the the quad size fool you." Yeah, anything within like five yards, I got. <laughs> yeah, fifty. You you forgot to say fifty-five yards. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, the only guy who was on the team before that they've re-signed <laughs> is Morgan Cox. That's it. Nobody else. You know, guys have left and gone other places. They've only re-signed one of their own guys, and that was Morgan Cox. I mean, Nick Folk had a pretty good year last year. Yeah, I think he'll. I'm, I'm probably wrong. You could look at one extra point and one field goal. Now, extra point was with uh, Tannehill. That's why I remember that. And then maybe one field goal. I don't. I'm sure he missed more than one. But yeah, so he's he pretty solid. Yeah. Maybe he's asking for too much money. I don't. I don't know. So they're going to wait him out and see what happens. Yeah. So last year he was 29 of 30 on field goals attempts. It's a 96.7. No, and he missed two extra goal. points. Right, one that Tannehill held. Didn't he miss two? Oh, I thought he missed one. Let's see. On extra points. I don't know why, but I feel like he missed another extra point. He, 20, shanked one? he was 28 for 30. Okay. Yeah, he, he shanked one. You're right. He did. Because everybody was stunned. And that was, a, I think, a game at home, too. Well, and you bring up a good point. They could have had a million discussions with him, and he may have said, look, I- I'm trying to get three and a half million. And they may have said, go-, go get it if you can get it. But if you don't, two and a half or whatever, mm-hmm. they – I would think with a veteran like him, both sides are probably pretty real with each other. Well, well I'll show what you're trying to do in the Titans. You know you can't fix everything in one season. Yeah. you got to have a quality kicker. You do know what he did uh, do last year, and that was pretty impressive. So you say, okay, what is a reasonable price? So what in the open market? There's been some kickers. I know punters for sure have been signed. What has mm-hmm. been the going rate? I thought it was around like 3-5 maybe for just good solid kickers. Granted, he's more than that, but uh, – I think you you probably really got to say we're going to do that. Maybe they feel like, hey, we got three options here. We're going to wait to the end to see which one uh, caves first. So, Kiami Fairbairn for the Texans. Oh, I, Ooh, think I like was, him. He was the first kicker that got re-signed uh, this offseason. Uh, he got three years, $15.9 million. Uh Will Lutz, who was reported to go somewhere else, Ooh. but then the 
Broncos came in and said, no, nah, we're going to re-sign him. <clears throat> he got... Uh, yesterday, it was two years, eight point four million. That's what Greg Zerline got exactly. Two so years, eight point four. So going so four and more. Me, I mean, these guys are all younger too. By the way, folks yes. is, is older. So if you get to the three to four million range, I think I don't know what did he make last year. Do we know? Uh, but. Well, that's easy. I can get that. But to me, I'm trying to buy time off of them Titans for one more year because I do not want to draft a kicker. And then I don't want to spend a boatload on a kicker in free agency. So, you know, you just – but you want a good one. I mean, those kickers are hard to come by. He got traded. He was playing on a two uh, – he was playing on two years uh, five million. So he was 2.5 million. Right, and you look at his numbers. He probably, hey man, I, I, I should get more. I should double down on that. Guys, <laughs> I missed three kicks the whole freaking year, <laughs> and y'all didn't think I could kick touchbacks. Remember that was like, oh my gosh, you never kicked touchbacks. Do, I didn't right. get asked to. to do right. They told me kick down low and make them return it. That dude kicked the crap out of touchbacks. Yeah, he was kicking them out the end zone sometimes. Oh, it was nice to look at. Yeah. Michael Badgley, uh, one year the money badger. Uh, he got one year, one point two. He can kick everywhere. It seems like, but here. So that's yeah, that's right. He he was a, he's, he's been yeah, through he's a couple that, times. Yeah. So, it's, uh, so it, it Nick Folk is probably your best option right now. Just solidify it, knock it down, and then your other four option, million one I mean, year four million. And then your other option is to ride a a rookie, whether you draft nah, one in the seventh or an undrafted hey man, free agent. The points I think are going to oh, be at a premium. I would be like, let's get it back. Well, speaking of that, let's where where are those? We then we have a kicker on practice squad. Who who was that? Didn't we have two kickers? They had the two young dudes. Kate York. And then we let one and they go. Both, then we, we they came, let both of them go. The right. little one and the big one. And then, then we bring somebody <laughs> back like a little bit during. I thought somebody was on the practice squad. Uh, it, no, okay. Maybe I'm getting confused. Uh, no, maybe they did. I I just man, I I don't know why. I thought there was a doubt. Maybe one week if folk could go, and they for, for whatever no, reason. I think you're right. And they may assign somebody for a week and then let them go after the practice squad, but. Uh, Maybe, yeah. Maybe they they think they, they they can sign them to the to the roster. I don't know. I don't know what's going on, man. So when you're in transition and you're rebuilding, you got to have a solid kick because you're going to win. You got to think you're going to believe that you're going to win some close games that you probably shouldn't have won, and that helps speed up the transition. And then you know it brings hope and excitement and all of that uh, to winning some games. So yeah, man, we need a kicker. Goodness gracious. I, I saw the Titans did get a – didn't it – or or almost about to sign – let me get it right – a strength and conditioning coach? Did that happen? I did see that report. I don't remember By exactly. PK, right? Yes, yes. I yeah, saw that report. I don't remember exactly what the what the <laughs> job title was. I will look that up, and we will have it for you. Oh. Or unless you got Practice it. squad. No, I don't have that, but – I'm a hoarder. I know you are. <laughs> what is my what's the folder I've been using yeah, to carry it's for all the, season? It's the flip card from the last game. game. What's it say? Which I wish I wouldn't ruin this now because of Derrick Henry's life. Stop <laughs> going so it. Silly. I wrote all over this thing. Stop oh, gone it. Uh there was no kicker on the practice squad for the last game. Oh, okay. So so there wasn't another kicker laying around. It okay. done gone it. Okay. The uh the guy was uh Zach Woodfin. It was the director of sports performance. That's who the Titans are in line to hire, per, uh, per Paul Kaharski. Zach Woodfin. Well, they're busy down there. Oh. They're trying to sign these dudes, and they're signing Zach Maybe that's Woodfin. why they, they hadn't signed a kicker yet, because they, they had to get the, the strength and conditioning coach, because he had to make sure that the kicker's quads and hamstrings are hey, ready to go when he comes in and gets signed. They say after you're 40, <laughs> you should have no explosive movements. And Nick Fogan, <laughs> seriously. You, if you're 40. What? Well, I've never heard this. Oh, no. I, I've had some explosive move. At least still in my mind, they're explosive, but they're probably the not. The only explosive movements I've had have been uh, my bowels. So, <laughs> I'm just telling you, if you ask any physician, sorry if that was graphic. If you ask any physician, oh, if you're 40, go get your physical and say, hey, I was thinking about playing basketball oh, in the church league, and I'm really going to go at it. And that guy or gal, whoever your doctor is, is going to tell you, do not do it. You will tear uh, your – oh, what's Abductive the staples luggage. down the back? Well, that maybe that. No, the staples Achilles. down the back, you're like Achilles. Yeah. That's what everybody tears. <laughs> like they've been shot. You go down like that you've been shot. the worst fear of mine is to get a – oh So my. they got old Woodfin down there, old Woodchuck, 
checking folks' <laughs> hamstrings and his Achilles. All right, uh, we got to take a break. Oh, Kyle in Nashville will lead us off in the next segment. Oh, we got man. time to take phone calls. How are you feeling about Derrick Henry? Do you wish the Titans would have traded Derrick Henry when they could have and gotten something? Also, he was maybe in, rumored to be possibly a Texan. Texans or Ravens, which one hurts worse? I can tell you which one oh. it would be for me. Oh, and we'll take Texas it. would hurt. Because you guys see him twice a year. 615 737 1045. Jump in here. For many of you who have lived here a long time, you already know Eurofix has been in Middle Tennessee area for your European car repair needs now for 24 years. And we've all gotten to watch them grow. And I don't know about you, but I love watching a hometown business take off. Well, we're now proud to announce the fifth location in Mount Julia for Eurofix on Mount Julia Road, right across the street from Dairy Queen. And Eurofix can serve you in Franklin, Hundred Oaks, Murfreesboro, Bellmead, and now Mount Julia. Pretty cool getting to watch a small town mechanic starting in the barn in the backyard of a single wide trailer and now grow to five locations repairing thousands of cars each month. On a Eurofix, you get a three year nationwide warranty and a free to loan a car with every repair appointment. And all you have to do is just give them a call at 844 Eurofix. That's right, 844 Eurofix, or you can just visit them online at myeurofix.com. That's myeurofix.com. But I always tell Blaze at you.
Titans in the pistol. Mariota. Now he goes in motion. Direct snap, Derrick Henry. Throws it, jump pass in the end zone. Touchdown, Titans! Henry to Corey Davis. Oh, the jump pass. Remembering uh, Derrick Henry as a Titan today. Derrick oh. Henry signing with the Baltimore Ravens. Two years, 16 million, up to 20. Mm -hmm. Two years, 16 million, up to 20. So essentially the $8 million deal that Pollard got here. Uh, he got the same eight million uh, with incentives that could get him up to ten million a year on that two-year deal to the Ravens. Let's take Kyle's phone call six one five seven three seven one zero four five. You want to follow Kyle? Also, a very busy day in the F and M Bank chat. Shout out everybody who is watching Zone TV as always. Hello, Kyle. Hey, good afternoon, guys. Um, second time caller here. Um, question I had, I noticed it earlier, and this is also based off of what. Bleacher Report has to say. Um, I think there's a lot that you could take and, and give with that type of report. But one thing I noticed was Christian Folden at number 23 um, as one of the top free agents. Uh, I would like to hear you guys' like, comments on that. Uh, they've pretty much specifically stated that he's been off for about two, two years now, two or three years, if I'm not mistaken. I tried to pull it up before I got on the phone. But um, – you know, he, he's he's had off years, except for his, like, first year, I believe. Um, I mean, do you guys really think that he is a top 23 free agent right now? Um, I mean, I'm an Oregon guy, so uh, Eric Armstead for me is, like, something that I would love for the Titans to go after. Obviously, I was very excited when the Titans got Mariota. Um, just I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on, on, uh, on Christian Fulton and why he is the number 23 overall, supposedly – uh, based off of what Bleacher Report has to say. Was he, and I appreciate let, you taking hey, my call. Kyle, let me ask you, was he 23 when it started, or he's the number 23 guy that's available now? Mm. Uh, that 23 was based off of what I recently saw, and I work night shifts, so I get the, I get like early and late night calls on uh, what, you know, what you can expect for uh, free agents. Um, and I noticed that, I believe it was either at 10 or 11 this uh, last night, or – Early this morning, uh, what Bleacher Report posted. I wish I had the uh, the post at the time. Uh, I was trying to trying to find it, but I couldn't. So, okay. But it was very late or early this morning. Okay, late or early this morning. We got you. Thank you for the call, man. Appreciate you so, checking in for a second time. So okay. he the what he must have been looking at is right now because I did find a uh, article from Bleacher Report four days ago. So before all free agency started, and Christian Fulton was at number thirty seven. So with all the signings. Um, he must have moved up into the top 30. Who else is on that list that are cornerbacks that you see up there as of today? Uh, let me get that back. They have ranked higher than him, not below, but Xavier Howard was at, so this was from four days ago. So Xavier Howard was at 32. Um, Kenny Moore's at 29. I saw Stefan Gilmore somewhere around here and the, in that range as well. Steven Nelson from the Texans was at 31. So those are the kind of guys that are ahead of, or were ahead of Christian Fulton four days ago. Jeremy Chin as well. Uh, he's more of a deep or a versatile DB rather than straight up cornerback. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, everybody knows that I, I like uh, Fulton's skill set, but with his injury history, I, I would be, wouldn't be opposed to seeing, looking into uh, Nelson. Wasn't he with the Texans last year? Correct. Steven yeah. Nelson, yeah. Yeah, number 21. He's a quality player. And these are kind of the players I'd be targeting in a cornerback. Nothing elite at this point in time because I don't feel like there's an elite corner out there that I would want to pay that kind of money. Now, if you want to trade, that's a different story. Mm -hmm. But I don't think this is the year to be trading if it was me. Like, I don't want to – here's – I don't want to trade for even next year a pick. Let, let's just say if someone offered the Titans a first-round pick, for next year's draft. You know why I don't want to give away that? First and foremost, the first thing that comes to my mind, I need a security blanket just in case Will Levis doesn't turn into the franchise quarterback. See, so these are the things where you're looking ahead. So you got to continue to plan ahead and you just, I just, man, man, trading for Sneed and giving up your seventh, I, I just, man, that's a, even next year's pick, I, nah. You expect that you're going to win, but you don't know. Yeah.
You don't know. I expect Will Levis can be a good quality starting quarterback in the NFL with other players around him, but I really don't know until I actually see it. So, so I, I'm right now I would go for middle of the road service players that are good quality starters in the National Football League, and hopefully on the younger side, like the 26, which is look like what they're where they're going. Uh, if I'm going to bring in a veteran, I'm going to say, like, we let a couple go, She's or Autry. Those are the type of players who are still getting production, good locker room guys, bring some leadership uh, to help, you know, continue to build this rebuild on a faster track. That's kind of the thought process because, to me, there's nobody out here like, oh, man, that's going to just change our whole offense or defense. I, I, don't, I don't see any players out there, so I'm not going to spend the money when, even though I have the money. So I, I just I'm I'm going for quality starters in this league. They're the high character, yeah, and they've proven in this league they can play and, and try to get them. That, that's kind of why I liked they lost out on the Mooney. He's not spectacular. Mm. He's just a good quality number two in this league. That's what he is. Mm. And he got 13 million to be the two. <laughs> yeah. Now, now some people are gonna say he's the one there, right? But they're right. He is still a two, like you know. So, it's, <laughs> so this, I mean, Kirk Cousins is. I mean, not Kirk Cousins. What's the uh, uh, the cousins with the um, the Jaguars, the wide receiver there. Uh, what's his uh, the, what's his Kurt? Uh, the receiver from A and M that they signed number thirteen. Oh, Christian Kurt. Kurt Christian yeah. Kurt, right? See, it, it, when he got that money, everybody, I was I was sitting here saying, "Whoa!" He's the one who broke the market, right? Like, and he's a two. See, he's he's a two. So you got to have both. Uh, so right now, to me, theoretically, you. You make it get a better receiver in the draft, and so that still tells me they're going one two with their pick. With one, if one's going to be a receiver, the first round or the second round. Yeah. So uh, I found the actual article he was looking at. So Christian Fulton is number twenty two, but Patrick Queen, who's actually number two on this list, just got signed. So Christian Fulton would move down to number twenty one. Well, his competition are it's yeah. the other people. His position. so the so the other DB uh, cornerbacks available. Um, ahead of him on this list. So, Xavier Howard at 18. Steven Nelson, like we mentioned, uh, he's at 17. Uh, Kenny Moore from the Colts, he's at 15. And then Stephon Gilmore is at 12. Man. And those are all the cornerbacks that are uh, ahead of Christian Fulton on this list. I would I- imagine part of that is it's a premium position. Premium position guys typically will rank a little bit higher on all these lists. Right, and right. also, all these lists are subjective. So that's somebody at Bleacher oh, Report yeah. was like, man, I love that dude coming out of LSU. I mean, you get his hamstring straight. Right. You he got yourself a, a oh, freaking no. first line cornerback. I'm, well, it's everybody's situation is so yep. different. Like we've said, we've done that. Let's worth, try another guy out like yep. that. I mean, that's kind of where you lead to. So, yeah, hearing that list, uh, I, I only hear Nelson. Now, other than uh, Howard was a top five corner in this league, not anymore. Yeah. Gilmore has. Getting stiff hamstrings. I watched him a few games really closely. Still a good player, but that's not what I'm looking for at this point in time. I, I want a young player, and I can go one year deal. Let's see where you're at to a three year deal for a modest rate. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't, I want to, oh, you getting up there in age, and you got a, you're running, you're a runner, you're a sprinter when you're a corner in this league, and he, he getting heavy hamstrings there. Borderline getting safety type level speed. He's just his skill set and his uh, technique is so good. He only gets exposed every now and then. Mm-hmm. He doesn't have that top end speed anymore. Him or Howard, which uh, you know both of them are still probably. And there good was a minute there. Both they're of those players. guys, Ooh. right? They, they're Ooh. still good players. I mean, yeah. I mean, let's let's speak on it now. I didn't Gilmore win Defensive Player of the Year one year. Yes, he did. I like, see. So let's, <laughs> yes, no, let's not forget now. I just <laughs> I'm just preferencing yeah. it for my cup of tea. Where they're in this league and where the Titans are at now. If we are a player or two away, now nah, all of a sudden, okay, let let's roll that thing back and let's get get a veteran corner in here. Uh, so yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I'm signing a young guy <laughs> uh, or uh, drafting. I just man, this trade stuff with the Sneed. Then you know, a guy came on talking about knee issues, and I'm like, "What? Mm-hmm. I'd be pissed." If something <laughs> happened. And he get here, and then he's always injured. Yeah. Out outside of Fulton, out of that those list of cornerbacks, the youngest one that I said was Kenny Moore, and he's 28. How old was Nelson? Nelson was 31. Ooh, man, but he's not gonna cost me. Yeah. He, he, I mean, he, yeah, yeah, he's probably going to be seven million. Fulton and Moore will probably be the 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 How upper much you tier get for of. More? I like Moore, but 
I like him in the slot, and that's why McCreary's still kind of developing there. I mean, I think he can be something there. So I, Moore it, plays outside, too, but he's on the short. He's my height. Right. So and I he just, is known there as a as an inside guy. guy. He that's, starts outside, but everybody goes through wide, so he's almost always inside. If they just said, we're going to sign Kenny Moore and put him in the slot, we're moving Roger outside. I wouldn't be that opposed to it. Okay. No. Nah. I think I think what's slow in the development of McQuarrie is he has to keep going back and forth for a young player and just not honing in on one. It's just like playing tackle or guard or guard and center. Like, okay, at some point I got to say, okay, I got to be a master of one of these spots yeah. and then the other one I'll just do on the side. So what is he? Like, do you, you think of McQuarrie as a blitzer? Do you think that when you watch him play? Like, he has to blitz, he has to be a man-to-man, he has to play deep, so he has to be a great tackler. I mean, there's a lot of tentacles. I think he could potentially be a really good one, just like Kent Moore. But just, they can't have the injuries and then moving them outside yeah. and inside. And, man, I I wouldn't be opposed to it if, if it's just, uh, yeah, I wouldn't be opposed to it if that's all I had to do. Just because I like Kenny Moore. Like, see, I don't want to know if I want to do that. I want an outside guy. Let's see what the market value is here for Nelson. Now you just got me curious. I didn't realize he was 31 years old. Me either. Me either. But I, I'm Two a, years, 8.4 is what Spot Track shows for so Nelson. 4 million? Uh, 8.4 I mean, per 8. year. 8. Yep. 8.4. 8. 8. Yeah, that's why I said seven. So, yeah. That, yeah, you're right that's there. That's kind of where I'm, I'm targeting. Yeah, that's the if I'm going to sign a veteran who still can play, that's where we at. Now, if Gilmore and, and Howard want to come and roll the <clears throat> dice with the seven million, eight million, I'm cool with that. Now, signing uh, a woozy kind of helps make that decision, I feel like, a little bit easier because now you don't have two outside corner spots you need to fill. You have you have one. Mm. So making that decision of do we want Roger to play outside or do we want him to stay inside and do we need to go after another outside guy in the draft makes it a little bit easier. Boy, this is, again, we're not having a third. It's just a kick in the a ductus lungus. No, no, no. But answer the question was if we sign Kenny Moore. Yep. See, that's no, no, what we're saying, so, but, so but we already know what Roger is. But if we sign Kenny Moore, we would have to consider moving him out. But if we didn't sign a player like Kenny Moore, then you're not worried about moving him out. And if we did sign Kenny Moore and you needed to move him out, having a woozy on the other side as your one as your cornerback one, as your first outside guy would make you a little bit more comfortable moving McCreary I, out. I'm gonna, as I'm gonna say this the woozy for the money, I, I'm not ex- super excited about. You said he signed for twelve, thirteen million. Uh, it was three years. I three believe, for thirty six. Yeah. So, so twelve. Yeah. He signed yeah, for twelve. I, I feel like he's a, a seven, eight, nine guy. Nine million per year. I, I don't. I don't. I don't. I thought that was a little much for me. Now we can look it up real quick. You know where I'm gonna first go. His his playing history. Where is it at? He's still a young player, right? A woozy. Yeah, but twenty. Seven and eight. Yeah, I think you're about right. So I think he's 28. I think he tore his ACL. I'm just going off the cuff, the top of my head. I could I be could be wrong. I, I think he tore his ACL one year, and then his recovering after that. The next previous two seasons, I think he missed games. See, so that's a pattern for me, especially at the hardest physical position as far as running in the NFL is backpedaling faster than people run forward. So. ACL, and I don't know if it was hamstrings after that or what the next year or so. Just look and tell me if I – so because I've watched him because I didn't know much about him until he was with the Bengals. Obviously, he's a good player because he started from day one there. I mean, he, he beat us. He was the starter there when uh, they beat us here in the playoffs, correct? So he's, he's, he's definitely a starter in this league. It's just that I don't, I don't know if he's 12, 13 million. Like, eh. That's, he's kind of he's he's really a two, mm. like if you go out of a one and then him, oh now we cooking. So with so with the woozy in twenty twenty two, uh, in his second year with the Bengals in week eight he tore his ACL, and then twenty twenty three he played fifteen of the seventeen games. He also spent time on the IR in twenty twenty. It looks like with a hamstring, and that was with the Cowboys. So he was with the Cowboys. From, so he's with the Cowboys for the first four years of his career. 
and then has been with the Bengals since 2021. 17 to 20 with the Cowboys, 21 to 3 with the Bengals. Gotcha. See, and I hadn't heard very much about him until he got to the Bengals. Yep. I don't know how much did he start there with the Cowboys or not. I haven't paid attention, but yeah. So it's just, uh, I think he's good. I, I, you know, but you get on the open market. That's kind of how you get up to the 12, 13. Last year, he had a herniated disc. See? That, that's the injury that kept him out of a couple games. He was on a limited snap count, um, and then he lost the actual starting job to a rookie, DJ Turner. See? And All red flags right here. They had another – They the Bengals had another injury in their secondary, and so he returned to Came the starting back. of the lineup. Yeah. That's how he got back into the starting lineup. The only time he ever played a whole season was in 2019 with the Cowboys. He started 16 of 16. Other than that, he's never played every game in a season. He's not He's not done it one time. Yeah. Two seasons, he's played eight games. Rookie year, he played 10 games. And this is going on year six? This is year one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, eight. Eight. Yeah. Yep. See? So that that leads me to okay, he's shown he can play in this league and be a good quality starter, but for what price? I'm not. I wouldn't have gave him twelve, thirteen million. I, I would have put him in that seven, eight million category, where I'm getting quality players that can start in this league and buy me some time for two or three years. To we get a whole roster all the way ready full bore when the, when the stadium's open. That doesn't mean we still don't win. But now I've kind of stacked it. Now I got backups who could play and start if they need be, and just. You know, we, it's all proven. So that, that's that's why I, you, I've never talked about it because he he can fool you because he, he can play really good and be a good player, and then all of a sudden, boom. Like, I don't like hearing nothing about herniated disc. He missed two games for herniated disc. A corner. Dude, everything about playing corner is about twisting. <sighs> everything. You're off balance. It's one of the positions you get caught off guard. You have to be able to adjust, have loose hips, hamstrings. I mean, I mean <laughs> it's a – Wow. I, that one there was uh, the, for that price. I was a, I was a little surprised. So he averages twelve games a season. Is what his average is. So so basically, we dealing with Fulton. And Fulton averages ten but and a half games we, a season. And what did we play Fulton last year? Oh. It was a one year deal for four million, right? Or something. Now Fulton was at the no, end. No, that of was his, Bunting. Yeah, that was Bunting got one year. Right. Uh, Fulton was on the last year of his rookie deal. That's right. right. Yeah. So you. To me, that's where he, I mean, that's why I said seven would have been fine for me. But hey, you know, I don't I don't know the market as well as they do. I'm just looking at history patterns, and it tells you everything about his resume. And so when you start having issues with him and missing games, then you, you don't get mad because he showed you who he was based off his resume. That's so what he, what he did. So if you don't trade for Snead, like if you don't feel comfortable enough giving up your draft capital for Snead. Is Fulton an option to to bring back? Fulton always would have been an option for me. I, I I would have told him though that it's not guaranteed you're gonna be the starter. Right. It's just as way as you got to go in here and compete. I probably would have gave him the bunting deal, the one year, four million, five million with some incentives. If he starts, he gets paid. If he doesn't, then he doesn't. That's kind of how I would have used. Yeah, like I'm not far from saying that's what I would have done with a woozy. Now I get once you get on that open market, man, and then familiarization with the head coach. By the way, from the Bengals, you know, he may bring a whole bunch of other leadership skills and things that I don't know anything about. One more cornerback I did miss on the list who's actually really high up on this. He's number three. Uh, is Kendall Fuller from the Commanders. Yeah, I don't know much about him. Like, was he with the Commanders when the Titans played him two years ago? Remember when, um, maybe it's more longer than that, when Farley was playing corner? Remember that was one of the games that he actually played corner? So that was in in uh, Washington. Kendall yeah. Fuller, twenty nine years old. He's been with Washington since twenty twenty. He was Washington, then Kansas City, then Washington again. Yeah. Fuller, he's been around a minute. Yeah, uh, I would. I'd be open to him, but <laughs> I, I'm, I would be waiting just like the Titans, so I could get him like at seven. He's Vinny Fuller's brother. Right, of course yep, they are related. A million all of them. the Fullers, yeah, they are related. <laughs> they are related. Yeah. And so, guess what that tells me. Well, what was the, the Fuller here? What was his history? Uh, not very long. Right. No, injury history. Yeah, See? because of that. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Good player. Yes. Remember they were trying to decide, okay, is he more a corner or is he a safety? Because he did both. <laughs> yeah. Good player, but he, he kept he kept getting nicked up. He was like, a, what was the guy that was from Arizona that was a backup kind of like safety corner, had range, real super athletic here recently. Um, 
I want to say it starts with an S, but that's... Oh, uh, Isaiah Simmons? Was he, like, the one that was, like, the, the linebacker? Well, that was Arizona, right? Oh, that was. Are you talking about that played for the Titans? Played for the Titans. Oh, I don't know. Let's figure it out in the break, because we got to take a break. And we come back, and Gil's calling all the way from California. He wants to talk about Derrick Henry. We got lots to get to. Free agency continues to uh, blow and go in the NFL.
Blaine and Mickey, 104.5 The Zone. Blaine and Mickey, powered by all four seasons. Garage doors. Hanging out with you guys. Hanging out with Gil all the way from California. 615-737-1045. Hello, Gil. Hey, fellas. How's it going? Man, great. Good hearing from you. Yeah, I'm back at it. I'm back, you know, getting back into the groove of things. But what I would like to say is uh, I just want to give my props to Henry, man. He was my favorite player on the Titans for a whole bunch of years. And I just love going to see. I, I flew all the way to Tennessee multiple times to come see him play. And, uh, you know, I just felt it, you can't help but be happy for him. But when you look back at it, even though I'm optimistic about our new coaching staff as to how we failed him as a team to put the proper players around mm. him. And I just think that he's getting disrespect from certain people, calling him a two-down back. But let me tell Lamar Jackson what you're getting, man. You're going to get a running back that these teams can't run those all those tricky defenses and everything. You're going to get nine in the box. Life is going to be a lot easier on you. And when it get cold in Baltimore, man, it's going to be hard stopping Derrick Henry. And I think that now he's going to be on a bigger stage, and they're going to see what uh, how good of a running back they got. But uh, tighten up, and I can't wait to see uh, how we do moving forward. It was time for change, so I can't be mad about that. But uh, Henry's going he's going to show him. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Gail. No doubt. I don't think anybody doubts that at all, for sure. Uh, if you love Derrick Henry, like you're a big fan of Derrick Henry's, you can miss him like crazy. But if you're thinking, like, where would be the best place for him to go? Where he went. Yeah. They, I, they're I, dedicated I, to run the ball. I almost got him in the trade. I mean, they, <laughs> that's, that, that, that's what people are saying. And they said it. I think the Titans nixed it. I don't know what was offered. That, that's it. We need to have that discussion at some point. What should have been the threshold for them to take it? To take the trade last year? Oh, if they was if they were offering a second or third round pick, I would have done it. Well, I don't know. Well, you're talking to a guy who also was saying that they needed to trade the, the three headed monsters before, you know, Tannehill, Byer, their best players. Right. Because they're rebuilding it and the king before the season. So yeah, I would have I would have done it. But it worked out really well and it finished really nice. Uh so uh, with him, you know, rushing for all the yards, having a great last game and, you know, saluting to the fans uh, in the speech and everything. I, I thought it was classy. So uh, not only from the organization for him, so they let him go out uh, on on his own. And he ran all over the Jags and knocked him out. And he's always going to be remembered as the Titan. Yes. Uh, and oh, he, oh he yeah, the wherever Jags he goes. And yeah. being a Florida guy that he is. So, and the yeah. Jag killer. Bananas, you got moderate news? Uh, yeah, uh, it's not a signing yet, uh, but it is a visit as Chase Young, who was a first round pick oh, out of Ohio State, is set to visit the Panthers, the Saints, and the Tennessee Titans, per Aaron Wilson on Twitter. <sighs> He's Man, got all the tools. I am so conflicted with him. <laughs> What do you have one side? He is young. He's young. He he is young, and his name is Chase Young. Yes. (laughs) But uh, this is going to be interesting. I I was wondering when his name was going to start popping up around different teams because he's, you know, he's so talented. And then he came off an ACL and they kind of babied him back. I don't know the situation, how bad it was or not. Uh, And then they talked about how he wasn't hustling to the ball with the 49ers. And then all of a sudden he turned on, you know, he looked like he was running to the ball at least. Uh, in the Super Bowl, <laughs> not, not necessarily other games. I'm I'm sure you can go through any player and pick a point uh, where they're not running full speed to the ball, but uh, maybe he was a little conflicted with him and the coach. I, I have no idea with the personality, but uh, you would hope now he should be starting to peak into prime. And so someone of his ilk that was the first pick of the draft, he wants big, big dough. Yep. And his numbers don't prove it. So I don't know how I would approach that if I was interested in him. Because I would probably approach him with a, a one-year deal, prove it, or a three-year deal that's uh, maybe not as high as he would want to go. Hey, man, one year. Show what you can do. You can name your price if you're him. If you came in here and had eight or nine sacks and there were no questions about you hustling to the ball. Like, he's at eight or nine million. Like, here's he's going to be a younger replacement for this is what the Titans should be thinking archery but can you get the production and you got to pay him more because of his age and where he went in the draft so last year uh these are some pressure numbers uh harold landry 47 total pressures jeff simmons 47 total pressures arden key 40 total pressures chase young 66 total pressures that was just the pressure numbers from last year uh during the break i will look up 
He had seven and a half sacks in his over his two teams. So that matched his career high. That was his, his career year. high. He had seven and a half as a rookie. He had seven and a half last year. In between, he played nine games one year and three games one year, so he didn't have many sacks. Well, yeah, one yeah. year he tore his ACL. That's yeah. a three game. And then I'm sure the seven game is he was they didn't they didn't remember they weren't dressing him. He was standing on the sideline, looked like he was fine, but he wasn't he wasn't ready to go on the field, which is totally different than you know doing rehab. So they took him really. He missed in totality a whole season. Yes, based off of two seasons. Yes, as far as playing games. So. Yep. You know, he may be hitting his stride, though. You just never know. You catch lightning, man. And all of a sudden now you're playing with the ACL tear. After one year, now you're confident. You're back to who you were before, man. which is a seven-and-a-half sack type guy. What is that worth? It, boy, sacks are worth so much money in this league. Seriously. I mean, you're worth at least a million pressures. dollars a sack and pressures. Yeah. So what would you pay him? Seven? 10, 12, 14. No, oh, I, cu- I couldn't do See, that. I couldn't I, go to I double like digits. I like the thought process. Yeah. Like, oh, what does he work? So they have all these metrics to tell you what you should be paying. You can go, we can go look it up too. But man, what does Chase Young say what he should be getting on the open market? His market value, according to Spot Track, is $13 million. See? Oh, on a, on a one-year deal. Okay. A one-year $13 million yeah. deal. But so if you spread that over three or five, <laughs> now you <laughs> see. And so do you think he's worth that? Well, I'd be a heck of an interview while he was in my building. Hey, Amen. We're going to watch some film. I'm going to have everybody pull on everything. I, we got to have a long talk here. Because they need somebody else on the outside. They need – Key needs to be – Key needs to play like 42% of the snaps. He's most productive when he plays less. And the numbers bear that out. <laughs> And he's a six. But we're gonna pay him more. Yes, he's a six and a half, seven sack guy. Maybe together they're fourteen sacks. But what's that worth? All right, what's the hour number two of this I show worth? Know, we man. will find out next. It's Blade and Mickey powered by All Four Seasons Garage Doors. Coach Mack in about twenty five minutes. Hey. Hey, Tennessee, it's Blaine Bishop here. And with the unpredictable weather hitting us hard, it's crucial you ensure your home is equipped for any challenge. So don't let the next uh, power outage uh, catch you off guard. Cool Race Heating, Cooling, Plumbing, and Electrical has your back. And they're offering an incredible $1,500 off select at-home generators. Yes, you heard it right, $1,500 off. So don't gamble with your family's safety. Act now and secure your peace of mind with one of Cool Ray's whole home generators. And if that's not enticing enough, take advantage of their $49 tune-up for your HVAC system. It's perfect for ensuring your home stays comfortable in any weather. And if you've been thinking about upgrading to a new HVAC system, they're offering free estimates on replacements. And their expert comfort consultants are ready to guide you toward the perfect solution for your home. And Cool Ray, keep Tennessee cool, plumbing right, and lights bright. Visit CoolRay.com to take care and control of your home's comfort and safety. That's CoolRay.com.
Good afternoon. I'm Joseph Bonanno. It is 2.02. NFL Free Agency is in full swing. And the big news for Titans fans finally dropped. Former Titans running back. That's going to get hard to say. Derrick Henry is headed to Baltimore on a two-year $16 million deal. According to Adam Schefter, that ends a legendary era in Tennessee. Per Aaron Wilson, a former first-round defensive end, Chase Young is taking visits to the Panthers, the Saints, and the Tennessee Titans. Young had a career-high seven-and-a-half sacks in 2023 and appeared in the Super Bowl earlier this year with the 49ers after being traded from Washington to San Francisco. Some other update signings around the NFL. Former Ravens linebacker Patrick Queen staying in the NFC North as he agrees to a three-year, $41 million deal with the Steelers. Former Chargers tight end Gerald Everett is going to Chicago on a two-year, $12 million deal. And another quarterback off the board is former Seahawks quarterback Drew Locke is headed to the Giants on a one-year deal worth up to $5 million. For all your foundation repair and waterproofing needs, visit ussdn.com. Breaking news on once on your home for the Titans and Vols. This is 104.5 The Zone. What's up, everybody? Our number two of the Tuesday edition is on here on Blaine and Mickey, powered by All Four Seasons Garage Doors. Uh, here's the latest on the Titans. Been a pretty slow day. Uh, last night, if you were up late, you would see that they signed a linebacker, Kenneth Murray. Two for $15.5 million with a max value of 18. He is 25. He started 53 games in four seasons with the Chargers after he was the 23rd overall pick in 2020 out of Oklahoma. He was a beast at Oklahoma. Uh, you knew yesterday they signed Lloyd Cushenberry, who is a center. $50 million over four years. 12.5 average per year, third among centers. $26 million fully guaranteed at signing. $30 million total. Uh, the thirty million cash flow over two years is the most ever for a center in NFL history. Yes, yeah. sir. Uh, and Shadobi Titans don't pay. They, they do not. Shadobi <laughs> Wuze's deal three years, thirty six, twenty three million guaranteed, and then Tony Pollard got three for twenty four. He was kind of the opening shot yesterday. Yeah, he was. Yeah. We knew about that one quick. That happened really, really quickly. Uh, in other Titans news. As far as their own free agents, only Morgan Cox is back. No one else have they re-signed. Danico Autry, 2 for 20 goes to the Texans. You will see Danico Autry out there trying to kill Will Levis twice next year. Danico Autry. And he would have hit like three teams in the AFC South. Aziz Alshire, 3 for 34. Aziz Alshire goes to the Texans also. They're both on the Texans now. So he was with D'Amico Ryans in San Francisco. They are reunited. And then the news right before we came on the air today, Derrick Henry is signing with the Ravens. Two years, $16 million, up to 20 Texans were also in the mix. Uh, honestly, at this point, just give me him going to the Ravens over the Texans. That way you don't see Derrick Henry yeah, twice here, on yeah. the field next year. Give, give do me, they even play the Ravens next year? I mean, I know there's always possibility. They, don't, the they do not. <laughs> they do not next oh, year in the regular yeah. season. Yeah. So you... You can just enjoy Derrick Henry on Red Zone Channel or however you choose to consume Derrick Henry. Maybe they, it'll just be too raw of a scar, and, and you can't watch Derrick Henry next year. But you will not have to watch him come over here and run against your Tennessee Titans in that Texans uniform, which is changing, by the way, and I bet we'll have some baby blue in it. What? They're changing their uniforms. We can't do that. They may just sneak a little in in the trim or something, at oh, least. Oh, I don't know. We shall see. Well, it'll be interesting to no, see what No, you know what's did. really interesting? What number do you think Derrick Henry will wear? Well, everybody's just assuming he'll do twenty-two. I don't. I don't know. Oh, uh, he may PG go back to number two, two. His college number, or he may come out with another number. He maybe he wore at another time. I don't know. Because to me, if I'm trying to turn the page to a new organization and the celebrity status that he has, I want a different number. Ooh. I don't want to be. 22. New guy, new era. Uh, new uniform, new Sin- identity with this organization. Single That's digits, even think. lighter. Yeah, mm-hmm. less so number I, I to carry mean, around. Just think how much bigger he would look with a, just a number two on Oh, my Lord. How big that would look. A giant guy in a number you two. Like, like when you watch college football and they always have a defensive lineman in a single-digit oh, number. Like, yeah, look, look at he, that dude. He is huge. I mean, he would look like he did in Alabama, just towering over, over everybody. everybody. Yeah. 
Except this time in the NFL, which is more impressive, towering over everybody. Yeah. Yeah. So Tyler Huntley wore number two for them, but he is a free agent, correct? He is an available free agent quarterback. Yeah, he is. Tyler Huntley. So number two will be available unless they decide to re-sign Tyler well, I mean, 22 is available, I'm sure. Yes. Too, but that's just kind of how I would be thinking if I was him. But, you know, that was going to be a tough one. But as long as we don't have to play him, I'm all on there for that. Man. If he would have went to the Texans, they would have got three former Titans right there. Oh, my. That would have. Mm. Speaking of the Texans, uh, apparently there is – much mutual interest between them and Daniil Hunter, former Vikings pass rusher. Oh yeah, yeah, ninety-seven. Yeah, he's 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 solid. Yeah, I, I don't know why that the market that and uh, picked up for him as well. I imagine his reps are saying, uh, "Don't call us without like it needs to be really big money. Like you need to breathe heavy when you say the number Man, to well, us." Saying so long because the Panthers and Saints and the Titans are going after, or you know, or he's visiting Chase Young is visiting those. Organization is that the same for Hunter? Saints, Panthers, and Titans? No, I think for oh. Hunter right now it's just the Texans. There's that's it, mutual huh? interest right there. Daniel uh, Hunter in 2022 had 10 and a half sacks, and 2023 Daniel Hunter had 16 and a half sacks. Yeah, that's yes. I said I'm surprised he hadn't had a long term deal with somebody. Wait, like, this guy's producing. Well, he's so th- he's 12 and a half sacks away from a hundred in his career. Didn't one year he played for two organizations? I mean, in Still All, always Minnesota. I, there's oh. been talk about him going oh, places, but since he tw- never did. Okay. since 2015, 20, age 21 through age 29, he has played for the Minnesota Vikings and has 87 and a half sacks. So the Vikings went and signed uh, Jonathan Grenard from the Texans to a four-year, seventy-six million dollar deal. I'm happy to see him go, and that was their choice over Daniel Hunter. So now Daniel Hunter's like, well, I guess I'll go down to Houston and see what they're going to offer me. No, oh, good point. Yeah. Dang. Well, why, why, why aren't we bringing him in? Uh, I, I, what, what, how old is he? And, you know, pass rushers could go for a minute now. They can go to their mid-30s, man, he's, as we see with Autry. He's 29. He'll be 30 in October, so he won't turn 30 until the season. I mean, look at what they, like you, look what they got out of Autry. He's well, he's past 30. I mean, he'll be he'll be pretty pricey. I feel like Daniel Hunter will be, but for that production, put him next to Big Jeff, put him next to Harold, next to Arden Key. What has he averaged per year over the last five years? He's played nine years and he has eighty seven and a half sacks. So essentially, he averages ten sacks a season, and he missed. For the most part, he always plays all of the games. In twenty twenty one, he played seven games, so. I mean, if he'd been healthy that year, he would average 10 sacks a season. So he's 29. 29. And Chase Young is how? 25? I bet he's 25. But he has production. He is 24 years old. He'll turn 25 in April. Okay. So it's March. We're almost there. Yeah, because Chase Young just finished his his rookie contract, essentially. Chase Young was, you know, he's a big name. Second overall pick. Yep. Hunter gives me production. Maybe not have the star value, but the numbers speak for them. I mean, if they put and if they put him next to Autry, next to Will Anderson. I, I don't even want to think about this. Oh my that Texans pass rush would be something to worry about. Well, I had enough trouble with Grenard. They couldn't block him last year. Right, right. Well, we had you know, tackle issues. And they did. They could and technically they had trouble blocking anybody, you're right. Speaking of that, it, it, Dillard is a better cut on June first. But do you think they would try to, you know, make him be pay cut slash backup guy? Dillard, yeah, hundred percent. I'd go to him and say, "Here's here's what we're willing to pay you now," or instead of just cutting him. If you think he, at most, I would ask him to take a pay cut. Okay, so now you're relying and, on on the O O line coach. Callahan too. What if Callahan have his offers to make? Because he what? may like him. I don't know. He can say, "Oh man, I I can fix this." Because a bunch of teams have already cut a bunch of players, and they have not cut him. What are you gonna say? Oh, I was saying to fix him. Oh, maybe yeah. Callahan walked in there and was like, "Hey man, don't do anything with that dude. Don't do anything with him. Let let me have him. Let me let me have him." Because they haven't cut him, and teams have cut a bunch of people. Well, he can be a June first. I think it saves him more money. But they can they could. Pronounce it so he could. Yeah, they could there. say right now, "Hey mm-hmm. man, we're gonna cut you June first. Go find your next deal." 
And they have not cut him. What really makes him nervous, if that is what's happening, like Callahan says, ah, you know, maybe I can work with him, speculating that he could say that. Do you know the O-line coach for the Philadelphia Eagles? I don't know who he is, but I know he's one of the better O-line coaches in the NFL. He couldn't fix him. He couldn't fix him. (laughs) We couldn't fix him. The Titans organization couldn't fix him. And then now we're saying Callahan again. So... He may believe that because there's a lot of talent there, but man. He has $21.5 million still on the books to be paid by the Titans over the next two years, Dillard. No, if he's on the roster. If he's on the roster, okay. nine and eleven and a half. Another guy at that position who's on the market who is interesting, the production numbers aren't up there with Daniil Hunter, but Eric, uh, Eric Armstead from – the yeah, 49ers as well. The be interesting, he's yeah. 30 years old, so he's a year older than Hunter. Oh, look at his stats. Up. He's got 33 and a half stats or er, sacks in his career. Um, he's played a lot of games. The last two years he has not, but um, from 2018 to 2021, he did not miss a game. And then he's played nine and 12 in the last two years. Nine and 12. Is Armstead, is that uh, the team that drafted him? Uh, yes, he's yeah. been with San Francisco his entire career. Which is how long? 2015 to now. Yeah, I was going to say it's been a minute. Yeah, uh, see, I'm, and he's just a D-tackle to me. He, yes. He's not a, like, I don't know, the archery seemed to do better than that than I thought he would. And people are pointing this out. They're upside down in Audrey in, in Dillard's, Dillard's contract, contract right now. Mm-hmm. If they wait until after June first, it basically evens up. Right. right. That's but if not, they're upside down. So that's why they haven't done it. Like you said, they could just tell him it's a June well, they first cut. It, right. Go mm-hmm. find your next team. They did, they did that to somebody a couple years ago. Oh, and by the way, the guy we couldn't think of is Crookshank. Name Crookshank. Name Crookshank. Crookshank. Yeah. yeah, for the last. Who break. was back briefly? You're like he was here last year. I he was for two games. Name. That was Dane a good poll. Yeah, he was. He was a. He's a jack of all trades, man. He could play corner, nickel, dime, great special teamer. You know how else is a jack of all trades? Coach Mack. He can coach. <laughs> he can broadcast. He can do Coach Mack stuff. And he will join us next on Blade and Mickey, powered by all four seasons garage doors. Keep your powder dry. <laughs> yeah. All right, let me tell you about my friends at PAI Medical. We got into this pretty good yesterday, or was it the day before? It doesn't matter because the message is still the same when it comes to those guys, and you need to hear the message. If you are looking in the mirror every day and you are seeing less hair on your head, and maybe you got pictures in your house, or you got the pictures that you and your buddies circulate around, and somebody always jokes, yeah, remember that's uh, when you had your hair, and you just kind of laugh about it, then you go to the barber and say, just buzz it again. You don't have to do that. You can get your hair back. They have all the technology at PAI, wegrowhair.com. Matter of fact, I'm always telling people, anybody that asks me about it, I say you need to do two things. You need to you need to go to wegrowhair.com and see real people and real results, and then you'll be like, oh, I get it, wegrowhair.com. Then the other thing you need to do is call and get the free consultation, free game plan, free game plan. They'll tell you everything about how they can get you to where you want to go. They'll take some pictures. They'll explain everything to you. And at that point, you'll be like, why have I not done this before? So do it now. Permanent natural results from the company that you and I can trust. PAI Medical Group. WeGrowHair.com. Don't wait. Call them now. 615-376-6010.
below MSRP, below MSRP, below MSRP. It's pretty simple. Two Rivers Ford sells all new non-specialty Fords below MSRP. When you hear that music playing, I can't even think of anything other, anything when I hear this song anymore except for Coach Mack because I know when the music plays, he's on the Blaine and Mickey show brought to you uh, by Two Rivers Ford, Middle Tennessee's most trusted local Ford dealership for 40 years. Coach Mack joins us now. Coach Mack, legal tampering period. What a time to be alive, man. That's great. It's a great time to be alive. How are we doing, guys, this afternoon? Uh, legal tampering started in 2012. That's when the oxymoron was invented. It started in 2012, so we've had about a dozen years of it, so everybody should be familiar with it by now. Uh, for people who might say, gosh, Coach Mack, you know, I'm in my 20s. I don't remember. What was it like before legal tampering, Coach Mack? What would you tell those people? Well, before, there was no free agency, and that's what it was like. I mean, there was, there was, there was no free agency. So if you're on a team, you're on a team until you quit playing. And, uh, I mean, I, I've been through all the iterations, you know, for nearly 40 years in this business, just like uh, over 40 years, like Two Rivers Ford, the most trusted <laughs> dealership in the South. I mean, look, you got to adjust with the times. And I remember when legal tampering came in because it came all about, because you guys remember, you know, when deals were signed about 
12 seconds after the deadline on midnight. And so you knew it took longer than that to work out a very detailed $100 million contract that happened right here. So anyway, all of those, all of those things are just as, as it works forward, you just, you got to adapt to the times, but we've had a dozen years to adapt to legal tampering. How much of this stuff, like either, I I don't want to say starts, but how much behind the scenes stuff with agents and teams and personnel people is done over like shrimp cocktails in Indianapolis during the uh, combine? A lot, a lot of it, because that's face to face. You don't have to have any phone calls. Yeah. It's face to face. The other, the other thing too, guys, is the way it's set up there now with everybody in suites around the top of Lucas oil. You just got to walk, you just got to walk suite to suite to do it. I mean, I was with the, I was with the Rams when we made, you know, when we made the deal, and, and flip the thing when the, the Rams drafted Jared Goff, you know, for the, for the number one pick, you know, from the, from the Titans here. So it, 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 their, their suite was right next. The Rams and the Titans suites were next to each other. So you didn't have to walk out the door to go in the other door. You could step over the rail. And so, I mean, that's where a lot of it happens because face-to-face is a lot easier. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Uh, we wish Coach Mack was face-to-face, but he is with us on the phone today on Blaine and Mickey. Well, Coach, uh, I'm just trying to put you in uh, the head coach's, uh, sh- you know, chair as of right now with this question. That is, what is the perception on how valuable kickers are to teams? Well, I, I think everybody. I mean, it, it's 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 valuable. I mean, it's it, it. Their value has shown, and all you have to do it. I mean, you guys do it, and and our listeners are sophisticated enough to know it. Most of these are one score games in the national football. Right. Yep. And a lot of them come right down to it. So they're, 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 you know, they're extremely valuable. And that's why, you know, just like what the, the Titans did last year, picking up, you know, 39 year old Nick folk that just about made everything. Right. You know, so, I mean, it's, it, it's important. It, it, it's, it's vitally important. The kicking game has become more important. Now you, you talk about place kicking. I mean, I talked to bones fossil quite a bit who's on that committee now of the special teams coaches, you know, as far as changing the kickoff rules and those mm-hmm. types of things. But field goals, field goals are a scoring play in the National Football League. And now, you know, it's it's more vital than ever because teams are so even. Right. So how valuable would Nick Folk be to a team as far as like, I mean, he, I mean, he was 28 for 30 pretty much, um, two extra points, one shank, one bat, you know, hold or what have you. But uh he played fairly well, kicked, you know, had touchbacks. So I'm interested because the Titans are a team that's in transition and you need a proven kicker, maybe not a young kicker, but a proven kicker at this point in time just to get you through this transition where you get your roster straight. So, man, I'm, I'm interested to see uh, where they sign the kickers. You know any free agent kickers, man, just kicking around? I do not. I'm out of the, the, the orbit of kickers. I mean, I know people I can call real quick that live in that universe. <laughs> I'm out of the kicker universe, and and all you know, for for complete transparency, when I was the head coach, I you know I, I could coach every position. I went in every position room. Yeah. The only room I stayed out of kickers. Oh yeah, because oh, yeah. you know all I would tell them the yellow things hit it between it. Thank you. You know when when I ask you if you're ready and you can make it, then I expect you to go make it. Well, Coach, tell us a little bit about what you know about uh, Cushenberry, the center that the, the Titans signed, and if you recall anything from when you uh, scouted him, even when he came out of college. No, absolutely. Absolutely, I, uh, Blaine. I really liked him coming out. There was two centers that I really liked in that draft. Cesar Ruiz was one, and, and Cushenberry was the other one. The thing that stood out about Cushenberry is, uh, uh, first of all, I mean, he's, he's a tad under. He's a, he's a tad. He's 6'3". You know, but his he's got really long arms. Mm. And the other thing was ex- exceptionally smart, really a smart guy. I thought that he would be an immediate starter coming in, evaluated him right at the top of the pod of the centers. And uh, I, I was I was all in on him uh, uh, during the draft because, you know, I go back, I went back, checked my notebook. And, of course, I, I you know, I, I knew where I was on him. And so, I, and again, I haven't seen one snap of him this year. I haven't seen one snap of any free agent film because I'm uh, inundated with draft stuff. But uh, I do know that coming out, I mean, he was one of the guys that caught your eye pretty quick. Mm. So you some somewhat believe he's someone in there I can stabilize. Now we've seen him in the league and the National Football League stabilize the offensive line, at least in the center part of this 
deal. Uh, I guess tell us a little bit about uh, some tackles, maybe front side tackle too, but now with the defenses moving the best defensive end on both sides here, have you changed any with, let's say, second mid-round guys that you think can potentially be starters in the league? So I'm talking maybe second, third, maybe even fourth round as uh, this no, uh, pretty, draft is a little pretty, deep. Yeah, and it, and that's a relevant question. Rhett, Rhett Bryan and I have been spending all day putting these guys in pods now. We're finally to the point okay. after the combine where we can start podding some of this up. And, and, and I can still go through a pretty good list. And as you say, you know, down through down through the third and fourth round, that I think will be able to, that will be able to help. So uh, absolutely, there are some guys now. The ability, as you well know, the ability decreases the further you go down in the draft. There's a reason you've got guys rated higher than others. But this is a deep draft. We just got through going through all of the the offensive linemen. The, and of course, this counts all of them that were at the combine. There were seventy offensive linemen at the combine. This is a good year for offensive linemen of guys. If, if, you, if you draft them in the proper place and you can develop them, it can help you pretty early, I think, in their careers. Mm. Any tips on, just to the general fan, on no-nos to offensive linemen would make you not want to draft them? I don't like waist benders, and I don't like guys that, uh, you know, that, that can't move their feet. I just don't, you know, waist bending and not being able to move your feet. You've got bigger guys, but if you've got bigger guys that have got cement boots on, it's hard. You know, whether you're on the edge or, or you're in that center guard triangle, it's still a movement game. It's a big man movement game. But and that's that's why one of the one of the, the exercises they perform there is, you know, show that show their lower body flexibility because that's any really good offensive lineman I'm sure that you played with that I've been around all of my years in coaching and now doing this, you know, they, they, they've got lower body flex and they can move their feet. Now, how well they are technically with their hands and how good they are fitting into a scheme. All of those things are, 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 are scheme adaptable and they're also very coachable, but you need some lower body flexibility just to be able to handle the speed that's coming at you now from defenses. Mm. Well, with coach Matt giving us the Mac attack. Coach, I know everybody wants the biggest, splashiest names on the first day, but this does seem like a great time for a Coach Mac keep your powder dry because there are still tons of great players out there who are available. Well, there are experienced players out there. Yeah, you know, there are experienced players out there that, for some reason or another, you know, either either a, a club is not going to pick up an option, or you know, a, a club is is done with them. And 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 here, look, the asset allocation, and and I would caution all of our listeners. And, and I know they're sophisticated enough. You guys are, and I'm sure you educate them. These numbers that you see on these contracts, that's not the real contract. These are these are the, the, the inflate these are the biggest number that could possibly be that are out there before the contracts are even signed, you know, by the agents, because you know, that's what they, they do. They want to publish, you know, they've done really good for their for their players. So it, when you start digging in, I've done contracts, you start digging into the guts of the contracts and the votable years, and you start digging into to, to incentives, you know, likely to be earned, not likely to be earned. The asset allocation is different. You can't just take the gross number that you see, let's say the Titans, and just subtract it from what you thought your top number was as far as how much money you had going into free agency. That's not the way it works. And these, 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 uh, if these are, are extended contracts, they are built, you know, to be able to work out two and three and four years. It's not just everything at once. The only thing that's everything at once is those franchise tags. Those have to be paid at once. Those have to be paid at once if nothing else is done. Everything else, guys, wait until you can dig into it. And you've got a completely different uh, asset allocation group that's working now here, and they had money to work with. So just be just be real cautious of thinking how much money some guy's going to cost you, which, you know, really doesn't matter. It's just the price of doing business. But those contracts, until you dig into the guts of them, then you'll find out how these assets are allocated. How many people, for instance, this legal tampering started Monday and goes through today and then goes through tomorrow, and then the new league year starts uh, tomorrow at uh, right. 3, 3 o'clock. How many people in that building down there, for instance, with the Titans – are involved in negotiating and running back and forth and taking these calls. How many people, what is that process like in a building right now during this frenzy period of three days? Well, taking calls is different than negotiating. Yeah. I mean, you've got a lot of people on, on, on the phones that, uh, I mean, I did it during this time when I wasn't 
involved in the negotiating. Now, negotiating, negotiations, I would say probably at, at the max, probably at the max, there's four or five, you know, that, that are working on it. And then there's, there's one decision maker. So all of those things, as I said, the asset allocation part of it is a huge, huge part of this. Uh, when, when it gets to work, but you talk about how many people are actually negotiating, I would say probably five at the max. But on the phones, there's probably floors of them on the phones. Whoa. Coach Mack joining us, giving us the inside info here with the Mack attack on Blaine and Mickey. Well, Coach, uh, tell us a little bit of your thoughts on uh, Tony uh, Pollard uh, being signed with the Titans and then, you know, matching him up, teaming up with the Ty J. Spears and what you thought about him uh, actually when he came out as well because he's a uh, you know Tennessee guy. Yeah, well, I thought you know at Memphis they, they used him a lot there at the University of Memphis. And they even split him out some, you know, and they had two they had they had two backs and, and guys that you know were were pretty were pretty good when he was coming out. I, I, I like his game and what you know what it shows you now is that they're they're going to go to a, you know a, a multiple back system with those two two backs. Of course, you've got a veteran in Pollard, and then you've got a second-year player in Ty J. Spears. But they've got kind of the same – they've got a little bit of the same skill set so that offensively, you know, whatever you're doing offensively, then, I mean, it's it, it, it pretty much – you've got the whole run of the gamut of your offense, first through third down, regardless of which one or two of those backs are in there you know, because they can both catch it. They both they both run with, with power – you know, even though they're not big, thick backs, they both run with, with power. They're pretty good same foot, same shoulder guys, and they, they've got to make a miss in him. You know, so mm -hmm. that, that's I, – I, I paid attention to him when he was coming out, and then, of course, I, you know, I followed him a little bit there at Dallas just because of the whole Ezekiel Elliott thing. Mm -hmm. I know he's had, he's had some injuries, but he's come back and played from those injuries. You know, anybody that's been in the league for, for five years or six years or whatever, you're going to have some nicks on you. And so, but I think the biggest thing to, to draw from all of this is you've got two backs with some, I would say, more similar skill sets that will be able to take you through three downs, regardless of who's on the field. Mm -hmm. Take us through just the process, and not, not necessarily the Titans, but you've been a head coach and said in those rooms where you have a strategy going into, uh, you know, free agency, and then when it kind of curves and takes a different route how that strategy then changes how you go about your draft, if at all. Yeah, oh, it does. I mean, it absolutely. You've got to be flexible. And you've got to be able to – I mean, you, you've, got to, you've, got to, you've got an idea going in, which you can never – you know, you never know, especially free agency. You don't know what's going to happen because you've got agents and you've got money involved. You know, it's different than in the draft because you draft them, they're slotted, and, 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 and they're going to be on your team. You go free agency, there's a lot of variables that, you know, that come into it. So – to your point, which is a really good point, you've got to be ready, ready to pivot really quick during free agency. The thing that you have to be, though, going in prepared, when you make all these profile tapes and the coaches get together and discuss it with the personnel people about who you'd like, why you'd like them, how they would fit, then you have to have a tier of those guys because you're not going to be able to, to, to consummate a deal with everybody that, that, that you have put up on your board that you want to talk to. Even the guys that you, you – prioritize sometimes you prioritize them horizontally rather than prioritizing them ver vertically because you know you know you're not going to get every one of them well this is a, a national football league question any yeah. surprises and not necessarily players but any trends that you see in free agency that has happened like for me it's uh that the running back market has gone a lot faster than I expected just because there were so many really good running backs out there. So give us kind of your overview of what you've seen so far in free agency. Well, I, I think, I think you're right on with that, Blaine. I really do because there were, there were some, there were some backs that had been productive in the league that were released, you know, because of money. I mean, that's why they, you know, most of them were released because of money. And then, so I think that had something to do with it. Also, I think this draft, you, when you when just going through the draft, you uh -huh. know, like I've been doing for the last four months, there's not that premier back oh, in the draft. Okay, there's no B. John mm. Robinson in the back. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. There's no there's no premier. You know, in, in, at that happened. point right now. So I think both of those things uh, in conjunction have have led to these to these running backs, which I agree with you 100 percent. Came off the board pretty early. Now I think you're what you're going to see. You'll you'll probably see some more go, but now it'll be a series of probably one-year contracts now, you know, because I think your multi-year contracts, they usually dry up pretty quick, 
you know, in the, in the first uh, few days of free agency that with the, the legal tampering part of it. And so, but I, I think that has had quite a bit to do with it because there were, there was a pretty, there was a pretty good group of backs that were released from other teams or you knew weren't going to be back or had their contracts expire with the fact that in this draft, there are some good functional backs, but there's no, there's not that premier dude. You know what I'm saying? Got you. Hey, just on the way out, because you mentioned the running backs in this year's draft, who is the guy that you like the most? Just curious. Maybe the guy who you think Top would three, be the yeah. most complete. Top three. All right. Hold on. Because I know a lot exactly. of people like Wright from Tennessee. He's Boy, he seems like he's boosted right. his let stock me, a heck of a lot. There's a guy from Texas, you, too, right? Yeah. Yeah, Robinson from Texas. Let me tell you something. Oh, really? Jalen Wright has helped himself as Ooh, much yes. as anybody in this, in, 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 this, in this period. I mean, he really has helped himself a lot. I mean, a, a lot, lot. Because uh, I tell you who I like is a lower round, lower round guy is that Garendo kid from Louisville. Yeah, I mean, oh, I, yeah. I think, yeah, and then and then then I like Ray Davis. You know, I, I, I like I like Ray Davis for 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 a mid round guy. Mm-hmm. You know, out, out, out of Kentucky. Yeah. You know, from from yeah, Temple Andy. through through mm-hmm. through through Vanderbilt. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and so I really I really like what what, what he's been able to do. Uh, and then, then I like Marshawn Lloyd at USC at the right at the right place, you know, probably probably second or second or third day. But Jonathan Brooks and Trey Benson are at the top. But I think I think Jalen Wright again. Let me say this: uh, six weeks out from the draft has really helped his stock in this in this uh, pre-draft period as much as any running back in this in this system right now. Man. Well, Coach, we'll end with that. Uh, great stuff. Enjoy the rest of legal tampering, and next week we'll be looking more towards the draft, and we can hear more about the uh, Mac and Rhett draft board, and I can't wait to hear more about it. Guys, I always love being with you guys, especially when we got ball to talk. The National Football League captures 12 months out of the year. Mm-hmm. That's just the way it is. No it's the best. We love it. See you guys. Uh, yes, sir. The one and only Coach Mac. All right, we'll come back and wrap things up. Got anything you want to sound off on? 615-737-1045. Derek Henry again. Uh, going to Baltimore today. Lots of talk in the chat about that. Interesting side note about a quarterback uh, who will need another home soon in an association with the Titans. I will tell you about that next on Blaine and Mickey.
Don't stop till you get enough of Blaine and Mickey. Matter of fact, if you don't get enough, you can listen to the podcast every day, wherever oh. you consume your favorite podcast, and you can just download the Zone app and just keep your phone in your pocket because it's in there already and just put your earbuds in and, like, no matter what you were doing, you could just listen to the Zone all day. It's all waiting for you. Maybe you could even hear stuff like this. So we get all these emails from these betting services and sites. Yeah, you you do, you big gambler. Yeah, you know me. <laughs> Down with OPP and other things. Uh, bookies.com. I occasionally get just a random email from bookies.com with odds about where this person might go or this, this person might go. Justin Fields 2024 team odds. The clubhouse leader is back to the Bears. 36.4% chance. Number two is the Denver Broncos. That makes sense to me, right? Sure. They need a quarterback. Danger Russ is Pittsburgh now eating it. Um, Primanti Brothers having that sandwich with everything on it, which, by the way, I would love to have one of those. Las Vegas Raiders are next. Obviously, they need a quarterback. Uh, they're in fourth place, 14.3%. On this list next, after Bears, Broncos, Raiders, or the Raiders are in third place, rather, the fourth place team with about 12% odds of landing Justin Fields in 2024, your Tennessee Titans. What? It is on 14%. this list. 12%. So 12%. the Bears are 36.4, Denver 33.3, Las Vegas Raiders 14.3, and the Titans at a cool 11.8. So we'll call it 12. 12% odds. Justin Fields to the Tennessee Titans. I would not put my money on that. How in the world does something <laughs> like that happen? We yeah. need to get Chelsea Messenger on the phone and say, how does somebody cook up something like this? I think that goes back to, do you remember, I guess it was way earlier in the offseason um, where people were considering like the Titans like a, a quarterback destination uh, with Will Levis still, you know, after coming off of the the nine games that he had, and they were like, "Oh yeah, they're they're in the market for a quarterback." In the market for a quarterback, like, are, are they st are these like sports books and and, and these major uh, outlets still disrespecting the Will Levis future here in Tennessee? And, and not that there is a concrete future because we don't know officially what we have in him yet. Um, but it, it's his team right now. I think we can all agree in 2023, it is Will Levis' team. And the best option for him would be a veteran backup, not a... Mm. And, and I, I, I know Justin Fields is a veteran. He's been in the league for his entire rookie contract, but he is not a veteran guy that you would want behind your young star or young rising star. Yeah. yeah well, I mean, Justin Fields, he's... Uh you know, not really proven who he is in this league yet. And that's becoming a polished passer. We all know his athleticism and he can make a lot of the throws. Just his timing's off. He just can continually throw the ball to the other guys. So if someone's going to give him a second go round to establish that he is a, you know, really good quarterback in the National Football League, starting quarterback. So uh, Will Levis, it's funny, you know, I still get questions uh, just like that about Will Levis. If he's the guy I did a Houston uh, segment today there, and uh, that, that was one of the – Actually, the first question is, Will Levis, your franchise quarterback? Naturally, you know, they wanted to ask about Archery and, and Z's and guys that uh, that they uh, stole from us and naturally, you know, poking the bear on the, you know, Northly with the, the jerseys. You just said something earlier. So, <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's really tough just to say, okay, are the Titans kind of playing in their hands? Maybe they liked Fields and maybe there could be a possibility maybe after the season starts or if something happens to Levis or – you know, so I I don't know how all that gambling stuff works, but uh, right now I would be leaning toward uh, more of a mid range, probably high draft pick as a backup who now has established that he is now a career backup in this league. But if he needs to start for three, four, five games, he can hold the forward, and there will be no conflict in the locker room on whose team is it. That's what really happens uh, when you have an older veteran guy that they'll you know, make sure that that doesn't happen. What about this guy, per Diana Rossini? This just happened a few minutes ago. Mm -hmm. The Las Vegas Raiders are expected to cut Jimmy Garoppolo tomorrow, per sources. There oh. are a few teams interested. I'm good. Kick the tires on Jimmy G. Again, like Wayne said, this would be a guy who it's pretty much relegated to backup status now. But if he needed to play three or four games. Remember, he suspended the first two games uh, for violating the uh, NFL's PED policy. Wasn't I don't think it was steroids. I think it was a 
un uh he he didn't report a subscription that he was taking uh properly a subscription so, to sports illustrated or, uh, or something pres- prescription i got yeah, you, you i'm got just me. kidding i'm yeah. just busting your hump jimmy g hmm. well since he's suspended yeah because i forgot about that that's a great great pull there a banana to, uh yeah i want him in camp and everything else so i i would have to take a pass as the backup at least at this point now if somebody got hurt you know season starts and then he's available yeah I don't know if he thinks he's just a backup now. Wasn't he just started with the Raiders? Yeah, and then he lost he his job injured. to Aiden O'Connell. Yeah. He started as the starter. Well, did he lose his starting job because he was injured or no? Uh, I'm going to say I think he lost it both ways. I think he got injured, Aiden O'Connell came in, and then... And then he just didn't get the job back. They were just like... like just made a decision and moved on. I, that, maybe something to do even with guaranteed money or something like that. Let's don't oh, play him anymore. Let okay. the other guy play because if yes. he gets hurt, then we'll owe him more money. Okay. I, yeah. I I'd be out on Garoppolo. You're I'm, out, and for that, and for that, you're out. I'm out on Shark Tank. You're, you're out. Well, right. I, I'm a, I, I'm cool with him. Uh, I just wish he could be here at the beginning of camp. Well, he can come. He knows to, he's a backup, when you're suspended. He's you can back. come to camp, but then he'd like to have to go home for two weeks when the season started. Uh, I would be open to it. for for the right. I'm not giving him a boatload. Well, you, y'all saw Marcus Mariota sign for eight million, right? To the Commanders, would you give Garoppolo eight million dollars to be the backup? What immense you get? What do these guys are backups are getting? You got to hurry up, speed seven fingers million. in there because we I got think to go. Seven million, four. It's more than. Yeah, it's getting up there. He got a two-year, twenty-five million dollar contract Whoa. with the Raiders. Twelve and a half. I said before Ooh. all this started, I would have been fine with Minshew as the backup. You did. I did. I would yeah, have been fine cool with, with too, Minshew but... mania, because for like three or four games, my man will go sling it around. See, so Garoppolo's going to look at that and go, "Well, I'm better than Minshew." Yeah. So if, uh, I, thirteen I, starts. I would Jimmy rather G. pay like seven million to like Josh Dobbs to come back. Well, we got to get into that tomorrow because yeah. they do need a veteran backup yeah. quarterback. I don't think that you. Don't, I don't think you have to pay that for Dobbs. He played last year for three or yeah. two. Exactly. So <laughs> exactly. I would yeah. rather well, pay how for about Dobbs five for Dobbs. You. Buy a lot of chemistry sets with that. All right, we got to get out of here. Three HL is coming up next. If anything happens with the Titans today, they will let you know. But in the meantime, in between time, peace. peace.